Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So I'm standing here in front of my Lucas horizontal boring mill, and this is the next step to our shop gantry crane uh, video. Um, what we're going to do is put the columns up here one at a time and mill the, the bottom and top faces of the column so that that way when it sits on the floor, it's sitting there perfect. When it's sitting, when the beam is on it, it's sitting there perfect. It's just a perfect fit. Um, so we're going to have to indicate this in. We're going to switch out our cutters. I've got this fly cutter that I built um, quite a few years ago. This is my small one. This will do, I think, 16-inch pass. I've got one that will do a 32-inch pass, but we don't need that. We just got this one. It just uses a lathe bit, um, which I will have to go pull out of the big lathe. Um, so let's... Uh, get this thing set up. Let's get the, the first column in here set up and going. hard part done, well the first hard part, getting it up here. The second hard part is indicating it. Now we want to indicate on the column so it's true. Um, we got it tight to the, once it's tight to the table we'll have it this way. Now we got to get it this way. So this one is the hard one with the gussets. I can't set up my angle plates um, but on the rest of them I'll set up angle plates, lock them to the table and then it's just a matter of putting it up there, sliding them up to it, clamp it down. And simple as that. So I made a longer arm for my indicator here so I can get my indicator out and hopefully I don't get a lot of vibration, but we'll see how it goes. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but we're gonna try for it. So let's get started. <laughs> So we're all set up, indicated in. I'm going to uh, move the camera probably up here and shooting down. And then we'll bring the cutter in, touch off, and start cutting. See how it does. Um, I think it's going to do pretty good. It feels pretty solid to me. I mean, I added a couple clamps here. There ain't much vibration there. So I think she'll cut good. Let's set up and do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now check out that finish. Just about a mirror. And we started out taking about 60 thousandths off of this end and we're taking an over an eighth inch right there in the middle. That's how much warp we saw just from uh, welding. And I'm feeding about 18 thou per revolution. And this is a um, lathe cutter running a CNMG but on the, um, the larger angled uh, corner. This is, this is what the cutter I use to replace the, or to use up the insert. Okay, so we got our angle plates up here on the mill. Um, and what we're gonna do is grab our indicator and just indicate them in and see where they're at. Um, I got them lined up pretty good with the, with that uh, groove in the table there. And then we're going to, uh, so we'll indicate it. Basically we're starting off as using that and then we'll indicate it here, 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 here. And we'll get it indicated in as close as we can possibly get it to be perfect. And then we'll uh, go ahead and throw the, the other end up here, mill the other end. And then with having the plates on here, then it'll make it work good for for the next uh, two ends. And then with that other one, that other column, we'll measure the first one and then cut the other one to be as close as we can with, with that because I don't have a vernier caliper that's uh, over 10 feet. So we'll just use a tape measure, get it as close as we can. This isn't rocket surgery, so we'll get it close. fixtures all set up we got our next piece in the mill and uh, now we're gonna bring it in touch it off and take a skim cut on it and then we'll measure it and see where we're at um, and then measure the other one that isn't milled yet and then go from there so I'm just going to show milling this one and then uh, we'll kind of end the video there and hopefully uh, you got a good understanding of how this thing works um, and if not well there'll be other videos
There you have it. Milled perfect to the column. The ends, the base, and the, the cap, the beam cap, are milled perfect to the column. So that'll sit good on the floor. Um, I may have to put some leveling compound down or thin set or something to smooth out the area first before I set the beam, but then it'll get anchored to the floor. Um, so my next step is I'm going to get this one out of here, bring the other one in, and mill it to match the length. Um, we finished at 10 foot. 5 sixteenths of an inch, so that'll be perfect. Um, that'll work out really well for us. So, like I said, I'll bring in the other one and get that one going, but I'm going to end the video here for you guys. Um, again, this is, if I didn't say what it was in the beginning, this is my Lucas 441B48 horizontal boring mill. Um, I have four feet of table travel this way. I got 54 inches of saddle travel back and forth this way, and 48 inches of head travel, height. Plus, I have two feet of spindle travel on this thing, on a four inch bar. So it's a pretty pretty decent sized machine. Um, it's been, been quite handy, and, and uh, I was glad I got the opportunity to buy it when I did. So um, I've got a digital readout on here, which I just have on the, the table access and the column access, which really is all I needed. Um, so. Just a all around great machine and, and without it I don't think I could have done this job, this this project with, you know, there's no way to get these absolutely perfect when you weld them on. They'll always move a little bit. So um, so I guess that's that's it. I'm gonna get the other one in here, finish that up, but I'm gonna end the video here. Um, please check out down in the description. I got links to a bunch of uh, inexpensive tooling and stuff that uh, on Amazon that you guys might find interesting to help you out in this, your shop. Um, and uh, check out our website, www.toppermachine.com. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>